we've also done a lot of other significant items um we've picked i've picked a few highlights here such as the land use polygons where uh, we can use a weighted c rational c value for a catchment um, improvements when designing a system such as the ability to limit what's considered in several ways computing spread results for a ditch inlet that's um, draining a ditch kind of channel and then setting the maximum headwater for a culvert has been improved as well so this shape is going to be a, a land use area so here i'm going to set my rational c as a point three five user defined and i also have a catalog here and this can be customized um, by dot we we give an example one in the software so the first one was grass we're going to add a pavement in here Okay, so this is kind of like you're going through putting in your existing land uses that have different C values. Here we've got a 0.95 C value. The other one was grass was a 0.35. So now we're going to go ahead and place our catchment or drainage area. And the feature definition we're going to use is our land uses. Okay, so we've got our drainage area here that's straddling two different land uses. And we're going to look at our land cover areas, and then we compute the hydrology. This is going to look at the area overlap and then do the weighted average of um, those two. It looks like there's about 2% where it's thinking there's nothing. So it's getting a 0.5 default. But um, see here, it's about 40% uh, grass and then you know, about 45% pavement. And then down in the properties there, it's about a 0.69 uh, average C value for this catchment. And if we compute again, it's about a 0.77, right? So, and our land areas, maybe this is, uh, you know, we're gonna minimize our proposed pavement And if we compute it again, it's now at 0.763, so slightly, slightly different. Um, instead of just points like we did here, we can also do a shape. So if we add another shape here so some people have it digitized maybe from a gis or manually drawn from a previous uh, you know someone went ahead and drawn them all first we can go in and select a lane use shape um, and then uh, we can go in and apply that feature definition so we can kind of uplift our microstation shapes to land uses just how we can upgrade microstation shapes to catchments Um, so for this one, we're looking at our properties of a design scenario. We're using our rational method here. And we are going to design our system. Um, you can see there in the calculation type. So we've set some velocity cover and slope constraints. And we need to make sure that our conduits are using a calc catalog to make sure that they are using, you know, have the available um, inside outside diameters and cover calculation. But however, these conduits in our drawing are user defined. So we want to make sure our cover is going to uh, work here, even though it's user defined. So I'm going to have this new calculation option called um, the design inverts only. And 
and this is just a scenario. It's not something specific we added. It's um, just a new uh, scenario. Here, we're going to go ahead and compute the pipes. And we're going to regrade our pipes. So we've got it computed now. No summary. Because there's no hydraulic execution. It was just a physical only change. And now um, we have some cover constraints that are being hit. So we've only changed the physical, not anything based off hydraulics. We can also do here is just compute uh, all elements, selected elements, or a set, a set of selected elements, um, and we can. And the selection set can be saved. So here we have uh, the pipes downstream from this utility. Okay, so we kind of can make it a little bit more granular on what exactly is being upgraded or uh, reprocessed. Um, rather than just doing the hydraulics with everything, we can now just run, OK, well, I only want to up, you know, check for adverse slopes and cover calculations. And then I also only want to do it for these pipes in a selection set um, or the current selection or all. OK, so I, the reason this was added was because it can take a little bit longer to apply the hydraulic uh, or calculate through the hydraulics when really people just wanted to check some slope um, criteria. So hopefully this would save some time. OK, so we're in our drainage design file here. And we have different loadings for different pipes. So we have one that's a high strength because it's under the pavement. And then this one that out falls on the right is going to use the normal storm water. And there's actually multiple here that are high strength. Now, these are all circular conduits, and they're all concrete. Um, previously, when you would run the design calculation, it could flip between um, a, as long as the material was the same, that kind of in the cross section was the same, it could kind of flip between catalogs. So if you had a catalog of circles and a catalog, two catalogs of circle concrete, it could get mixed up and flip between them. Um, we fixed that. So now things that are on a circle concrete are not really going to flip to a different circular concrete and in, in this example basically a high strength could be reprocessed as a non-high strength in this example um, and that's been resolved uh, make everything a little bit easier um, so if you have you know different wall thicknesses for different types of pipes um, for different strengths they uh, you wouldn't have to worry about them reverting back Um, here we've got a drainage system, and we need to make sure that some network elements are inactive. So if we're going to go ahead and compute here, okay. So we have two subnetworks, and both were processed here. But and we have messages for both subnetworks as well. But if we just wanted to process the culvert, we're going to select the outfall of the item we don't want to consider for this second, right? We only want to focus on the large cross culvert. We're going to set this subnetwork inactive by selecting the downstream outfall element of our subsurface drainage along our roadway. Everything now has been set to inactive. So when we go back and reprocess, well, let's go look at the graphics first. We have a display style in this example called drainage is inactive. And we can see here it's turned everything inactive to gray. And inactive just means that it's not going to consider that when we compute. 
So to he see here we have just one uh, network was run instead of the two. So now if we're just worried about the results from the cross culvert and we're working on designing the cross culvert, it's a little bit faster because we don't have to wait through the uh, the computer just to re keep on reprocessing data that we're really not concerned with, right? So it helps with iterating. So you're not iterating over data that um, isn't you know relevant to your current task. And then you can also turn the network back on um, when needed. So we have a catchment on the left. That's what that box or partial box is. It's going through a channel and a pipe. So we kind of have to see the situation here on the 3D view. It's a little, so we've got a uh, conduit to a head wall, a channel to an inlet. So if we're worried about the capacity of the ditch, we need to be able to calculate the spread and ponding width at the, um, at the inlet. So if we go select the downstream inlet here, it has to be in SAG because there's no bypass. And we've added a gutter type here called a use upstream channel. Now the upstream channel in this example is considered the ditch. So keep in mind that this is um, a channel versus a ditch. Well, a channel is gonna be our, our grass one here, not a, it's gonna flow into the top. Um, versus the conduit, which is going to flow out, outfall element or outgoing element from this drainage node. If we calculate it and look at it, when we've computed the depth and the spread, and that's using the dimensions from the, um, the gutter, I'm sorry, the channel. And there we've got the depth and spread and captured flow. If we look at our Explorer and look at our profiles here. So let me pause the video there for a second. Let me go back one because it kind of went a little too fast. Let me go back. Where is that point? Here, so we have the, this portion in here is gonna be the conduit. And then we also have the channel here. So we have them in the same profile um, to help with analyzing them. Um, I know sometimes it would be sometimes a little tricky to get them into the same uh, profile, but now we can make it continuous and it also helps with the, uh, the calcs on there as well. There's the channel and there's the inlet. And we can see the hydraulic results as well. Okay. Um, let's see, the next one is gonna be how to set the maximum headwater for a culvert. Okay, so we have a profile view at the bottom, and by default, we use the um, we use the physical of ground elevation. Okay, and that's for max. And by default, we also use it for maximum headwater. And in this example, we actually want our slope to uh, determine the. Um, the head wall, I mean the, the headwater. And we want to use the headwater range type um, to user defined, and now we can have a maximum headwater elevation. Okay. So before it kind of looked around the node, 
and really we want it to be much further away from where the node was. So we've changed that so now you can key in your own value. Okay, so here we have um, our license activation. If we go to a our configuration variables, you can now have it set up to automatically activate a license. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new configuration variable here called suda default license. It can be one of four values, so it can be Stormcad, it can be Sewercad, Seward Gems, or Civil Storm. And it is not case sensitive. So now we've saved it. So now when we restart, we can see here that it's automatically activated that license. And if we go look in our message center here, it is uh, telling you that, hey, look, you got Bentley Civil Storm active in this file. Okay, so, and it will tell you the feature level in there as well. The software will go look at the active um, feature level from our license configure uh, controller here. And you can see here it's selected the unlimited links for the standalone uh, civil storm. And that's through the configuration variable what auto, auto, can automatically do that. It's optional. You don't need to set this configuration variable. But if you know that you always need a specific license in addition to the op one that comes with open roads, um, you can set um, with that configuration variable. Again, that is optional. It is not mandatory. 